Hello everyone and welcome back to another deck guide. This time we're going to be having a look at Syndicate and I know I haven't done a deck guide on Syndicate for a while. Um, part of that is because it's not the kind of faction that a lot of new players are advised to play because Syndicate is a very very difficult, it is probably the hardest faction to play because there are increased layers so to speak to the gameplay it's a very complex gameplay due to the fact that you have a an extra element with the coins which you kind of need to balance correctly there is certain ratios and things you need to think about you have to think you know two or three or even four steps ahead sometimes because you need to constantly balance how many coins you're going to generate versus how many coins you have or how many coin spenders you have so very very difficult to play so i would just disclaimer i would recommend if you're a new player probably don't play this deck um, I know it's kind of weird for me to put that disclaimer right at the beginning of the video, but I just want to make it abundantly clear because I, know, I don't want people to play this deck and then they start losing games and then, you know, I, don't, I, I want you guys to win and I want you guys to have fun and you know, this might not be the greatest if you're just starting out. However, I'm going to try my best to explain to you how this deck works. Uh, maybe you want to try it out anyway, but like I said, it is very difficult to play and I'm going to do my best to explain how best to play it. Um, so the first thing we have is Tiger's Eye Order Gain 4 Coins. That is the stratagem. The reason we're running this stratagem is because you want to get to Hoard 9. In other words, you want to have 9 coins. Um, the reason for that is when you get to Hoard 9, you can get out your Flying Rodanian. You can get a lot of value with things like Sal, but I'll get to that in a bit, in a bit for now. Um, also, our leader ability is Wild Card. And the only reason we're playing this leader ability is pretty much for Graydon. Um, this leader ability is a very bad leader ability, except because of Graydon, it becomes very good because Graydon is an exceptionally strong card. And when your opponent can't answer it, this card is insane. That is the only reason this leader ability is used. Otherwise, this leader ability, if this card didn't exist, this leader ability would be absolutely terrible. Um, but yeah, anyway, that's leader ability. Play a syndicate special card from your deck. If its provision cost is 10 or less, gain two coins. Every single special card is you know, 10 provisions, or well, less than 10 provisions. So this is always going to give us two coins. So no matter what um, special you take, it's going to give you um, two coins. Keep that in mind as well. Um, the next thing we have is Passive Flora. And that's an interesting one. Um, scenario, it's one of the scenario things. In other words, whenever you play a fee card, you're going to progress its chapters. So Prologue, spawn a Passive Flora Peach on this row. In other words, when you play this on the card on the board, you're going to get a Peaches, okay? What Peaches does is when you're at Horde 4, in other words, when you have four coins or more in your bank, it's going to boost itself up by one every turn. That's the first thing. The second thing is Chapter 1, play or spawn and play a Swindle, okay? That's just going to give you about four coins on average. Um, chapter 2, spawn and play an Eavesdrop. It's going to give you five coins plus a Mulligan, so to speak, or a you know Thinning, because you get to put the card at the bottom of the deck. Um, so keep that in mind as well. And this kind of gives you ammo, or coins for your spenders. So this card is vulnerable to a lot of artifact removal. However, even if your opponent kills with artifact removal, it's still going to trade up. So it's not the end of the world. Um, if you think your opponent's got artifact removal, um, maybe play a Zar first. You know, it's a defender, which means that you can you know protect units on the row and then play the passive floor. Maybe if you think your opponent's got artifact removal, to help protect it. Otherwise, you know, you can play this card in round one. Sometimes you want to try pressure opponent round one, or you can just play it round three or round two. Maybe if you want to bleed. Uh, very, very flexible card. Next thing we have is Philippa Alhart. Spend a number of coins equal to an enemy unit's power, then seize it. So, if you have five coins in your bank, you can play Philippa and you can steal a card up to five points. If you have nine coins in your bank and your opponent has a nine point unit on the board, you can play Philippa, spend all your coins, and steal the nine point card. Um, very, very powerful play, and also very, very good synergy with the fact that if you steal an opponent's engine, you get a lot of value because you deny their engine while you get an engine of your own. So ideally this card is used to steal opponent's engines. Um, otherwise you can just use it as a, a kind of like a spender in a way. Um, next thing we have is Vivaldi Bank. Profit 3, look at the top card from your deck. Actually, I'm not going to read all this text because it's kind of confusing. So basically you're going to get three coins when you play this card. And then you look at the number of cards in your deck equal to how many coins you have. So in other words, if you have five coins, you're going to get three coins from this. So you're going to have eight coins, and then you're going to look nine cards into your deck. Now, it's nine cards because the first one is free. So if you have five coins, you're going to get three coins from this. Then you're going to get eight coins in total, and you're going to see nine cards in your deck. If you have maybe two coins, you're going to get three coins from the bank. So you have five coins down total, which means you're going to see six cards into your deck. And then you have to pay a number of coins equal to how far into your deck that card is. I know this sounds very confusing. So basically, if the card is 
The third card in your deck, you're going to pay two coins for it. If the card is the fifth card in your deck, you're going to pay four coins for it. Okay, a little bit confusing, but it's, it's a very it's a very confusing card um, in terms of you know the wall of text that it gives. But that's the best way I can explain it. The next thing we have is Madame Louisa. Intimidate, which means every time you play a crime, this card is going to boost up by one. There are a few crimes in this deck, so it is kind of like an engine in a way, but its deployability is really, really insane. Your next tribute this round is free, and that is very, very powerful when combined with Savola, because Savola is tribute nine spawn the Savola's Frightener. This card makes that free which is insane. Essentially, this card plays for 15 points with the Savola, plus it's an engine. In other words, it can boost itself further on that. So this card can sometimes be like 17, 18 points um, when combined with Savola. You definitely want to try to use these two together. That is where you'll get the most value out of them. The next thing we have is Savola. Profit 2, Tribute 9, Spawn a Savola's Fright on the show. Now, it is important to note that the Profit 2 triggers before you have to use the Tribute. So in other words, if you're at 7 coins, you'll get 2 first, and then you can still use the tribute to get the Savola's Frightener. Very, very good card, good spender, and especially good when combined with Madame Louise. Um, next thing you have is MK, and this is a card that's relatively new in the meta. Um, you haven't seen this card too much until now. Range row, so you have to put it on the back row. Every ally turn on turn end gain two coins. Fee three gain a shield. It's very niche, you're going to use that fee three. So not very often used for that. However, sometimes in a pinch, if you think your opponent has some removal, you can maybe use the fee to give it a shield, but it's a little bit inefficient. So you're probably not going to do that 90% of the time. But however, two coins a turn is very, very good, especially when combined with Sal, which we'll get to in a bit. Um, positioning on this card is also very important when you play Sal. We'll probably discuss that in the gameplay. I'll try to discuss it now as well. Um, next thing I have is Azar. Deploy, spawn a scarab on this row, tribute three, spawn two scarabs instead, profit three, so you get three coins. And basically that means the scarabs are defenders. So you're gonna get one, you're gonna get two scar one or two scarabs, depending if you use the tribute or not. Um, the scarabs are one point with one armor, so two effective HP. And your opponent cannot target anything on that row until they kill the scarabs. So you can use this to protect things like MK, you can use this to protect maybe your passive floor if you think there's artifact removal, you can use it to protect your earworld or whatever. Um, very, very strong card, one of the strongest defenders in the game, and very flexible because if you think your opponent has efficient removal or damage, things like, I don't know, maybe Avalach or Lambert, you can decline the tribute, just get the three coins plus one scarab, or you can just use the tribute and get two scarabs, which is also fine. The next thing we have is Graydon, and this is what makes syndicate so strong and this is what makes this leader ability so valuable melee destroy an enemy unit with a bounty tribute five boost self by that unit's base power so basically what you're going to do with this deck is you're going to play leader ability with a slander put a bounty on a card with that and then you're going to use graden and kill it that is pretty much one of this is one of your biggest finishes this finisher can be worth 30 plus points very often absolutely phenomenal amount of points that you can do with this this is your finisher this is your big play you're gonna make at the end of the game the higher your opponent's base strength card they play the better it's going to be for Graydon. so let's say your opponent plays i don't know rodeo what you're going to do in in round three is you're going to play leader into a slander put the slander onto the rodeo then you're going to play Graydon. you're going to use the tribute and then you're going to kill the um, rodeo for a massive amount of points because Graydon is going to boost itself by eight he's going to kill an eight point card and you're going to get eight coins from it because when you when you kill something with slander um you get the coins equal to that card's base strength so you're going to get those coins back as well so that's a huge point swing um it's important to note though that if the card is less than five you don't want to use the tribute typically speaking so let's say your opponent has a three-point card and for whatever reason you want to kill a three-point card i would highly recommend you don't kill a three-point card but if you do don't use a tribute because you're going to spend five on the tribute to get three coins back not worth it so inefficient. Only when things are five or higher do you use the tribute. Typically speaking, there are niche scenarios and there are exceptions to that rule, but typically that's going to be the rule. The next thing you have is Flying Redain, Horde 9. Summon this unit from your deck or graveyard to a random allied row. It says deck or graveyard. In other words, you can do this multiple times a game. So when you get a full bank, in other words, Horde 9, this card will come out of your deck. So you always want to mulligan this card. And then... In future rounds, if you get to Horde 9 again, it'll come out of the graveyard to the board again. So it's going to keep coming back for a little bit of tempo and just some good thinning. Um, next thing I have is Eowald, and this is your engine killer, so to speak. If your opponent plays like multiple engines, you play your Eowald if you've got a bunch of coins and you kill them all. Um, profit 2, 
So you get two coins if you play this card. If horse will study, don't worry about that. We don't play horse, so ignore that. Basically, just profit two. Don't worry about the rest of the text. And then fee two, damage aiming it by two. So in other words, you can spend two coins and just damage each time you spend um, coins. So you can play, let's say you got six coins on the board. You play this card, you'll have eight coins because profit two. And then you can use all those coins and just, you know, do eight damage in increments of two and maybe kill two engines of your opponent. Very strong card. Um, the next thing we have is Diameter and Hunt. Barricade, in other words, wall this card as armor. Um, at the end of every turn, al every ally turn, boost salt by two, and then fee four, gain one armor. So, in other words, you can spend four coins to get armor again. So, if your opponent does damage the armor, you can get it, re enable it with fee four, although that is inefficient because you're spending four coins to get one armor and two boosts. If your opponent damages that armor, it means they've wasted one damage, kind of. So, it's, it's essentially worth you're spending um, four to gain three. Only use that fee if you think your opponents can't um, damage it again. That's just the way I look at it. Next thing is Corkstein. What this card does is profit two, fee two, purify unit. So you can use the fee and purify unit. And the important thing about fee is you can use the fee over and over as many times as you want, as long as you have the coins to support it. So you can basically use this card to purify multiple things if you want to, which is very, very valuable. Um, the next thing we have is Sal. Horde 3 at the end of your turn, boost salt by 1, Horde 6, same thing, but boost by 2 instead, Horde 9, same thing, but boost by 3. So this card can be 1 point a turn, 2 point a turn, or 3 point a turn. The more coins you have in the bank, the more this card will boost itself. Um, very, very valuable with MK. However, if you play this at MK, try to position the Sal on the right of MK because of order. Um, when cards go from front to back, left to right, you typically want to put the um, MK on the left. I'm not going to really explain to you why. It's a bit confusing. So I'm just going to say, try put the Sal on the right of MK. Okay? On the same row, but on the right of MK. Ideally. Obviously, there might be a situation where you don't want to do that. But ideally, MK, then Sal on the right. Keep that in mind. Um, next thing is eavesdrop. Profit 5. Draw a card, then put a card from your hand at the bottom of your deck. Putting it at the bottom of your deck is essentially thinning because you're pretty much never going to see that card again. Typically, you want to put a slander at the bottom of your deck because you don't want to play slanders from hand. You want to play them with your leader ability because if you play a slander from hand, your opponent can purify it and then your graden might be bricked, which is why you want to do it with leader ability on the same turn so your opponent can't brick your graden. You want to go lead into slander and then you want to play graden. But for that to happen, you have to have slanders in your deck. So this is a very good target to put the bottom with eavesdrop. Um, also, final is also fine. Um, slander place a bounty on an enemy unit. Profit 3, so as I said, bounties, if you kill a card that's bounty, you're going to gain profit equal to its base strength. So, very useful to combine with either Graydon or Earwolf. Typically, you don't want to play this card from hand, you want to have it in your deck, because like I said, this card, um, if you don't have it in your deck, your Graydon might break. Rather, want to do it with you in one turn with your leader ability. Um, first take, profit 4, poison the enemy unit. So, if you put two poisons on an enemy unit, it'll kill it. So, very useful when your opponent plays something tall, you can poison it, then you can poison it again, and it'll die. Uh, the next thing you have is Assault, damage enemy unit by 4, if you control 2 Salamandras, deal 6 damage instead. Um, Azar is a Salamandra, the Scarabs he spawns are Salamandras, and the Savola and the Savola's Fright are Salamandras, so those are your Salamandras in this deck. Um, next thing you have is Sea Jackal, and this is one of your proactive spenders. Fee 2, boost self by 3, Horde 7, boost self by 3 instead. So in other words, when you're at a Horde 7 or more, in other words, you have more than 7, 7 or more coins in your, in your, um, your bank, Instead of boosting salt by 2, it's going to boost salt by 3, which means it's a very efficient spender because it's going to be spending 2 to gain 3 points, which means it's essentially at a 1.5 spend to um, gain value, which is very good. However, it plays very much into tall punish, so you've got to be careful. Don't want to go too much on the Sea Jackal because if you have like a 30-point Sea Jackal and put all your eggs in one basket, your opponent's going to have a tall punish and you're going to be very, very sad. So don't go too hard on the Sea Jackal unless you have to. Um, Mutated Hounds, Melee Row given enemy unit bleeding for two turns, meaning it's a five point card if you play at Melee Row. Range Row, Poison enemy unit, which is basically very useful, things like Fist Tech, just some good poison. Um, Street Urchin, very similar to Sea Jackal, except Sea Urchin is profit three, gets you a bit of coins, and then fee one, boost salt by one, so you know, one to one fee ratio. And that is basically the deck. Like I said, very difficult deck to play. Um, I'm going to jump into some gameplay, I'm going to try to explain everything. I know this deck is very difficult, but I'm going to try my best to explain it, and you guys will see how it's you know meant to be played anyway let's get into some gameplay and see how we do all right let's see what we queue against um match up against monsters death shadow okay that's probably going to be a kicky more deck it's gonna be interesting to see uh, if we win round one we should be pretty happy if we can win round one 
means we can push run two if we wanted to. Um, we do have a lot of hoard in hand, well, a lot of fee. Poison could be good at the same time. I do need a spender. I don't have a spender right now. I guess I'm mulligan away one first tech. Probably mulligan away eavesdrop. I need to find a spender. That's a spender. That's good. Okay, we find the spender. That's great. And I guess we want to try win on one. So the best way to do that, I think, is play the die meter and hound. Um, get that engine going and try win on one with that. If we can win on one, we're very, very happy here. So we'll play that and then we'll see. Usually these decks don't really have much interaction, so it's chance so I might actually not be able to answer this. Looks like that might be the case. Um, I guess I poison one of these. Not really gonna give me a chance to poison other things. I think I want to get my horde up to nine as quickly as possible so that I can play my cell. And I guess next we play the street urchin so we can have a spend on the board, spend some coins, make space for thingy. Alright, so we'll play the sea urchin here, or street urchin, or should I say. Street urchin here. Um, we want to spend twice, so we get it to five, because it's going to give us four profit. So let's put us to nine, which means we can get the boat out, and then we can play the sail potentially and take the round with these engines, which if you can't answer these engines, we should be able to win on one pretty easily. So we'll play that. Um, let's get the sail down, I think. So we'll play sail here. And that should mean I win the round because, I mean, we're getting five points a turn here, which is pretty insane. And I don't think he's going to have a lot of ways to actually deal with this. Okay, so he plays that. That's fine. He's going to eat this next, I guess. Um, we'll play this now. Poison that. And every turn we're going to get five points a turn, which is quite significant. Um, so I think we might just build a win round one, which is great. And then we can maybe push round two, force out the Kiki more out of him. And once we force that out of him, I think we just win the game. Okay, so I'm not going to pass just yet. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend three coins here. Honestly, in this matchup, Zot isn't that important. So I'm going to decline the tribute here, actually. It's just playing for points, playing for profit. And I guess we keep our engines going. The longer our engines go, the more and more difficult it is for them to catch up here. Um, I think we just do this. And then maybe next time we play bank. Although, I don't really want to play bank. We'll see. But I do want to win round one. So I guess we are going to have to play the bank then. So I guess I'll spend three coins here because we can get profit through the bank. We don't want to over profit. So we play the bank now. And there's a couple of options we have. Um, Philippa is only going to have three coins in bank, which isn't good. I guess we just play a cork stein. It means we're going to over-profit a little bit, but oh well. We're arguing a lot of points turn. I think I might just end up passing. I don't know how he's going to do these points, but I mean, he does have a couple of points here. He's still getting, we're getting three points turn essentially, effectively more than him. Matter, the urchin. So he gets three. If he eats this, if he plays Yeager and he gets 13, he gets 14. Um, he gains three, but okay, so we so it's basically 13. Yeah, I don't think you can do it in one, so I guess uh, it gets more, it's 14. I don't think it's enough, I think we just pass here. He likely has to go a card down, I don't know how he's going to do these points otherwise. Okay, so ADC into Yuga, I don't think that's enough, if I did my math correctly. Which means we do make him go a card down, which is nice. And what is left in his hand? Living armor. That's interesting. Okay. Huh. Alright, so make him go a card down and make him use his living armor, which is nice. I'm assuming this is a Kiki more deck, so. A bit surprised he's living armor there, but okay, sure. That's not bad. Um, he's two cards down, so we get a card up on him. 25 point Sal, 22 point Dog. <laughs> That's pretty insane. Pretty insane value on that. Alright, so we can probably mulligan away one of these. And slander we don't want in hand. 
first tech is okay because we've got the poison here i don't think he's gonna push but maybe he does try to who knows um if he does pass you just take with the street urchin i think he's gonna push even though he's a card down wow okay so i guess i'm gonna play the poison here and then if he passes i can take with the muted hound it will pull out my mk but eh, whatever if he doesn't pass here i'm gonna play it anyway i think it does mean i lose my mk okay so he passed here so i can actually either do it with street jack or c jackal i guess or i could just take the poison i lose my mk though do i want to lose my mk that's the real question or do i just want to play my jackal i guess i just play the jackal honestly mk is kind of nice Means I lose a little bit of carryover because obviously you keep half your coins going into the future rounds. Um, so I lose a bit of my carryover, but I get to keep my MK in deck, which is nice. Because MK is a nice card. I do want to have her. If I got the death bell on the Goliath, it means I would have lost MK because it would have come out of my deck. Passive is great. Philip is not bad. Slander is kind of bad, I guess. Really looking for my. Really looking for my. My MK or my Graydon is a very important card. If I miss Graydon, that could be that could be a very big problem. I'm gonna mulligan this. Okay, at least I got the Graydon. Thank goodness, that's a very important card. I cannot afford to miss. So I'm gonna start with this, and then see what he does. So he plays the larvae. Um, I could potentially kill those larvae with this, depending on how many horde I get. Yeah, that works. To kill one of them at least. Can't kill one just yet, but soon I'll be able to. We'll do that. Kill the one. Hopefully there's no drown. I hope he has no answer for this. If he doesn't have an answer for this, we're pretty happy. Okay. nice to fill up with that i guess i guess we can fill up a kiki more queen we'll do that um it's all right. we're alone here. Just probably ah uh, we don't have any salamanders not enough for this i guess we can kick that and then i think we kill this it's probably gonna either play well he can't really play kiki more just he's probably gonna consume this actually if he consumes this we just try to kill all the ones i guess or we just fill up with this actually Fill up with those, deny all the insectoids. And then... We're probably going to lead a grade in one of his Kikimors and maybe eel at the other one. Okay, so here comes the Kikimors now. Okay, he's going to play it again. Probably going to want to grade in one of these. We don't have to though. We don't actually have to. Um, but then again, there's a lot of points. Maybe we just do it. So we're gonna lead it into slander. Put it on this one, I guess. Um Okay, spend one stage to other profits. And then next turn we kill this one, I guess. Well, actually, no, we can't kill one. I don't have enough coins generation. That's actually a bit annoying. I should have actually made a lot spent there. Um, actually, no, but then I have a profit. Maybe I should have actually declined the tribute on this entirely. Eh, that's probably fine. So I'll play this. And then we'll play this, and then we'll play this. Last cards are Osril and... Uh, Osril and something else. I don't know what the something else is. But we should be pretty okay against Osril, honestly. Um, This is a big point swing. This is only five. Yeah, last cards are Osril and something else. But I think we're perfectly fine here. We probably should decline the tribute on the... Um, great and actually just to kill this it's, we lost about a one or two points there it's probably fine though last cards are Osril and I don't know what the other one is maybe a Karen maybe not sure okay 
Okay, so yeah, that's the Azure. Okay. And then we play the Mutated Hound. Put the beating on that. And then we play the Savola last. Savola's a lot of points. We should be perfectly fine with that. I can't imagine many cards of his that could be more than my Savola. Savola's going to play for 6 plus because of the Mumadam. It's going to put an 11 on the board for free. And then we're going to have 2 coins as well. So it's essentially playing for 19 points here. Yeah. We should be more than fine. I can't really imagine what else you could have that could be more than that. Ugh, his last card's probably just going to be a dead Karen, honestly. Royal Cree into Dead Karen. I guess Karen procs a Thrive. It's not that bad, but it's still kind of not great. Not really much left in his deck. He's played pretty much all his golds. Ah, Penitent. Ooh, okay. Penitent for Puga. That's a lot of points. That's a lot of points, I guess. It's not enough, but it's a lot. Yeah, it's quite a lot of points. Sure. Not enough, though, but quite close. Good effort. So now we play this. And yeah, the game was a lot closer than it probably should have been. We probably should have won by like a couple more points, honestly, but eh, it's fine. Um, but yeah, like I said, it's very easy to misplay this deck. This deck is very difficult to play. And there are some, like they, like you saw there, I didn't count my coins quite. I wasn't really paying attention to the math. And because I didn't count my coins, I didn't have enough coins to kill the um, the Kikimore Queen. And he ended up actually not being able to, well, not being able to kill it, which meant procked up a couple more thrives which it shouldn't have been able to do but like i said that's why you gotta think with this deck you gotta count how much coins you have how many coins you need to spend and do the math that i didn't do the math there but that's a good example of how you can kind of mess up with this deck in some aspects but we still won luckily because the match is pretty fair for us and this game's another one i guess okay so we're against harmony okay that's an interesting one so this matchup is very much decided in round one um you really want to win round one long run against well they can push you in round two and bleed you very hard if you don't win round one so we probably want to be on the winning side of round one for sure we can probably keep these poisons because he's most likely to have a purify i could definitely see an argument keeping these poisons maybe my like away assault and uh we don't have a lot of coin generation um in terms of winning round one it might be a bit difficult we'll see we really do want to win round one because you know harmony can push us a lot in round two and cause a lot of problems if they do get a good bleed down We'll see how it goes though, we'll see how it goes. Um, we've got a lot of poison though, which means that if he does purify, we can poison again. Hopefully he doesn't have two purifies, and we can still get a poison through. That would be ideal, but we'll see. We shall see. Um, Alright, so he's deciding he's going to play Falv into Paul for bigger, or oh, for Percival rather, maybe. He does. Okay, so we poison that. He's probably going to purify it. We probably poison it again. And hopefully we doesn't have a second um, purify. So we'll poison this. He's probably going to purify it. I doubt he would invest five into call for that if he didn't have a purify. doesn't have a purify. Okay, that's surprising. Um, Alright, so we'll go ahead and poison that. Finish it off. And we would like to win round one. Winning round one is kind of important for us. If we don't win round one... Things get a bit difficult for us, so we'll play that. Um, then we'll play the Street Urchin, get some coins in the bank, maybe develop our Sal, maybe? Um, we do need more coins, however, to get the 9 Horde, which... Uh, it's a bit difficult for us to do, we'll see. Okay, so he does have to kill that, sure. I think I'm gonna play the Sal here, get this engine going. That's the dream. Okay, so he plays some no of the poison. I guess we're gonna have to purify this then. So we'll go ahead and poison or oh, purify that rather. And if he passes here, he will place for 12, it's enough. I think I'm gonna decline trip. I'm gonna play this, decline the tribute. Puts me in a horde nine, and then I get my boat out as well, and this starts getting boosted up by quite a bit. Yeah, I think we do that. Okay. So we get enough coins here to do this, and then we go into round two. Now the question is, what are we going to have to bleed? Because we'd like to bleed for sure, but the question is, what are we going to have in hand in order to bleed? Because I would really like to bleed. We did get, a, he did get my Zara out of me, he did get my Sal and my Cork out of me. Although he's pretty much used all his poisons, so I'm not really worried about purifying anymore, which is fine. 
Um, slander is kind of not important. Um, eavesdrop is good for coins, I guess. I could play eavesdrop and then he plays waters. I can kill the waters. Um, probably gonna mulligan away street urchin. Uh, I guess poison also kind of bad. Ah, I guess I'm gonna go poison. Okay. So I guess we're doing this. Gets me in a horde nine. That's great. Finding Savola off the top is really good for me. I think I'm gonna go in the urchin then. Um, get my boat out. And if he plays waters, I can play Eld and just kill the waters entirely, which is good. He doesn't play the waters. Okay. So we'll play the jackal then. We'll spend once. We can play Madame Savola. Try pressure him. And if he plays waters here, he does. He does actually. Okay, so he doesn't even play the waters. Interesting. I've been on your trail since your first step in these woods. I mean, I can play the Madame, and then I can play the Savola. I don't think I need to just kill us just yet. I think it's fine. The fact that he's not playing waters is kind of it's kind of interesting. I'm actually trying to greet up in the waters. Very very interesting. Um, I think we'll play this then. Yeah, once more, and then we might play. I mean, maybe we even go leader Graydon now. He hasn't developed waters. It's kind of scary that he hasn't developed waters at all. Kind of scary for him. Not scary for me, of course. Very good for me. Very bad for him. Surprise being this greedy, not committing any waters at all this round. Not respecting the Madame Savola. Very, very interesting. Okay, so there's the Malaga, sure. Uh, not bad value. I think we'll play the Earwalt here. We'll spend once. Kill this. Remove the body. And, I mean, if he doesn't respect this, I'm going to go leader greater next, I think. Okay, he's not respecting this at all. I mean, if I pass here, let's do some math. How much is Oak playing for? Oak is playing for 1, 2, 3, 4, prox 1 harmony. So 5 plus 8 That's enough, so I guess I have to do this. Okay, so we're going to go for the leader Graydon. It's very far down my deck. I do not like how far down that is, but sure. Uh, Knowledge is a weapon of great power. Um. Okay, so he can play the oak. I hopefully get leader out of him. Um, if we get leader out of him, then we're pretty happy. So his last two cards are leader into call. We'll lead into council. Good human is a dead human. It's unfortunate this was so far down my deck. So purify ulf. Okay. Skirmisher and last card oak. Is that even enough? Ah, looks like we toured harmony. Okay, nice. So we toured the harmony. It looks like he didn't even draw the waters. That's why he's being so greedy. Well, he wasn't being greedy. He just didn't draw waters, I guess. Okay. Interesting. That could have been kind of interesting if he drew the waters. I would like to have seen how that would have gone, but yeah. Okay, so we beat the Harmony. Let's go again. One more game. See how we do in the last game. Okay. So let's see what we're up against. We're up against Nilfgaard Poison. Okay, this matchup is very interesting. Azar is very important here. Usually they don't have an answer for Azar. Um, Azar is going to be a very, very important card. We have a Spender, which is nice. We've got Poison. We've got a lot of poison actually. Um, do I want the assault? Not really, I think. Um, sea Jackal. I mean, I could play this practice if it dies. I have another spender. Maybe I mulligan with one of my poisons. Sounds okay. Okay, so this is going to be a very interesting matchup. Um, I think we're going to start off with the urchin. We're not going to spend it all with it. Um, actually, well, okay, let's do some math here. So if I do this. That means when I play a poison, I want to be at... So I, I go down to 5 coins. Then I can play a poison. And when I play the poison, it means I get to 9 coins, which is quite nice. Because that means I can get my boat out, which is what I want. So we'll do that. See what he does. And then we'll decide from there. So he plays a poison zone. Sure. Um, we'll play the first tech then. Get the boat out. And then we'll follow it up with a meter hard, I guess. 
We could also play the Sal now. Honestly, Sal in round one is probably very good in this matchup because this card is just gonna die. In this anything that's you know points of your own is just gonna die. So okay, so he purifies that sure. I think I'm gonna throw down a Sal here. If he poisons this, that's fine. We just purified it. If he doesn't get answered, we can win round one on Sal, which is quite nice. I really would like to win round one if possible. If he does try and poison it, we can of course play Corkstein and purify it, which in which case I think we win the round with that. So he plays the morale. Um, I think I have to follow up with that. If I don't follow up with that, he's going to poison us, and then I can't actually interact with it. I think that's always my follow up. I'll never be imprisoned again. And then I can use this with a poison. That means I win round one with that, I guess. So I'll follow up with that. A little bit expensive, but winning round one is nice. And I think I'll take this. Rot tosser. Okay. So I guess what we do then is we play this over here. Protect the soul, poison that, and let's see how he responds to that. He's still getting one point of turn at least with soul, which isn't bad. It's not amazing, but it's not terrible. Okay, so he passes, nice. So we win round one, that's good. That is good. We have a little bit of carry with the coins in the bank, so that's not bad at all for us. Um, the question is, do we want to push round two? We honestly might. Depends on what we draw. Depends a lot on what we draw. Slander. Not the greatest. We want to play with leader ability, so I think we might going to slander. Uh, might going to one C Jackal, I guess. We got the passive flora. Uh, we could play the passive flora, honestly. Push round two with it a bit. All he can really do is answer back with it. I mean, he invocates it, but that's not a very good invocation because he can't use this later. So I think we'll open up with this. We'll maybe push in and see what happens. If we get an invocation on that, I think I'm okay with it. Okay, so poison, sure. Okay, so I'm gonna get an engine down on my own. If I get to hoard nine, if I get to hoard nine, it means I'm gonna be able to get my. Sea Jackal art, which is quite good for me. And we still have, of course, Purifying Hand, which is nice. Okay, so play the Cupbearer. The okay. have particular tastes. Poison him, this gets me to Horde 9, then next time we spend with the Sea Jackal, and then we open up space for first tech. So now we are at Horde 9, which is quite nice. So he plays Masquerade Ball. Let's dance, dance till the sun sings its morning song. One man's battlefield uh, is another man's right patch for harvest. Coins there. Um, yeah, a bit of a mistake. Should over profited a bit for no reason. Um, probably seen this at the bottom, means we can't poison that anymore. Spend here. I should have watched. I should have spent. Well, I guess the, the fee in here doesn't actually matter, but I should have played this earlier, I guess. Um, we'll spend twice. We're going to get profit with this anyway. We'll spend twice here, and if we get a pass, we take it, I think, at this point. We got the Masquerade Bull out of him. He's a thirsty dam. There's an argument to play the Corkstein. Um, I actually can't pass just yet, so I guess you're going to play the Corkstein. We'll purify this. Shut the mouth of and then we'll spend again with it. And see if we get out of here. Matter gets him ahead. You will never forget. I'm just going to spend my coins. I kind of just want to get out of this round if I can. So I'm going to spend my coins here. See if I get a pass. Let's have a look. If I get a pass, I'm taking it. Bribery. 10 points. Not that easy to do. Bizarre. That's fine. I'm going to pass on the Zar. I think that's a good pass for me. Yeah, I'm going to pass on that. And then we still get a bit of coins with this for carryover. I think we take the pass on this. And then we got final say in a short round three that's not bad at all. I 
I did over profit here. Yeah, There's a little bit of a misplay there. I forgot about the fact that the <laughs> that the passive floor is going to proc on the um, eavesdrop. A little bit of a misplay again. Um, but like I said, this deck is very easy to miss and uh, make small misplays, which can actually end up costing quite a bit. Then again, it is difficult to play around that misplay because I mean, if I do play the Sea Jackal early, um, I'm still over profiting. But I guess I could have saved myself like two coins or something. But yeah, sure. Um, good bleed, I guess, even though we did lose on some profit, but still not a bad bleed even regardless of that. So I guess we mulligan away what? We might need the spender, so I guess we can maybe mulligan this. Then again, this is also a spender, maybe it's not that bad. I mean, this might die, however. If this dies, I need another spender. This is kind of a spender. I really want my Zar. Zar's pretty good. My Dumbbell's also very good. I guess we can play Bank for the Zar, and if you can't deal with my Zar, we should just win the game with that alone. Let's see us. So he's going to put back the Masquerade Ball, I guess. I'm going to start off with the Mutated Hound. And then... So you put back Masquerade Ball, right? Yeah, put back Masquerade Ball. Then we'll play the Bank, and we'll try get the um, Azar. Okay, so he's leader. He's trying to find the ball. He does find it. Very lucky. He put down top three cards in his deck. That was a 1 and 3 from finding that. He got the 1 and 3. Lucky him. And then he plays Joaquim into poison. That means he can just poison this entirely. Yeah, this guy, he got very lucky there with those things. Okay, sure. Um, we'll go this now. We'll go bank. Get the Azar. And protect our stuff from things like Vincent and whatnot. Hopefully you can't deal with these. If you can't deal with these, we should be pretty happy. All right. So his last cards are probably Vincent, Lambert, okay, so he's got the Lambert, that's pretty bad for me. Um, okay, so we play this then. We might play an Eowald and hope it doesn't die. Gotta play this last though, to play around the fact that he might have, um, he might have if a, um, Vincent, so I need to play this last. So I guess we're playing this. And I guess we'll spend as many coins as we can. The problem with playing um, this now means I'm going to lose my tribute on this, but I can't really play into Vincent. I've got to play my Graydon next, even though it means I will. Okay, we're going to have to play Graydon now. The reason being is because I can't give him a Graydon on. I can't give him Vincent on this. Although, how many points do I lose? Hmm. Yeah, I don't think I want to give him that. I think we're going to play this. We're going to use the... We do this. And we do it on this, I guess. We're going to get three coins here. So it's exactly enough. Well, we get four coins here. Gets our boat out. We'll use tree for that, I guess. So his last card's Vincent. I think we beat Vincent. So by this line of play. So I think that's fine. Last card should be Vincent, I think. The reason why we don't want to, the reason why we sequence like this is because this gives us a doomed unit. So okay, so we spend twice, we've spent once here. And we play the tribute here, and the reason we sequence like this is because this is a doomed unit, which means Vincent can just kill it. So we did this to play around the Vincent there. Um, obviously you want to use the Madame on this, on the Savola, but if you do it on the Savola, then you give him a good Vincent. So that's why we played around the Vincent and end up winning the game. That was a bit of an interesting one. Um, Anyway, that is going to be it for the video. I hope you guys enjoy this deck out. Like I said, this deck is very difficult to play. Um, so don't be discouraged if you're not immediately finding results of this deck. It does take some time to get used to. And, you know, you got to keep in mind a lot of things like your coin generation, your coin spenders. You've got to balance all these things together. And that does take some time to get used to. So, you know, it'll probably take a few games, maybe not quite a few games even, to get in the hang of things. But like I said, if played correctly, it's, it can be a very, very strong deck. And yeah, very fun deck as well. Plays very differently than most other decks in Gwent right now. So hope you guys enjoyed the deck guide. Um, if you did, don't forget to like, subscribe, and feel free to ask me any questions in the comment section below or come by my stream. I do stream every day and I'll leave the link for that in my description below as well. Um, ask me any questions if you have any. And yeah, until next time, bye-bye guys. Take care.